Hello boys and girls. Um, today I'm going to start reading a chapter book to you. It is called Holiday Inn. You can see it's orange. It is a 4.0 level. Uh, what I will do is read a few pages every day to you and eventually we'll get through the whole book and then you can quiz on it. So let's get started with the adventures of Holiday Inn. Editor's Note. I had thought I'd heard the last of Harold, the writing dog, when he delivered his book, Banicula, to my office some time ago. Much to my surprise, he suddenly appeared again one recent rainy Wednesday afternoon. The dreary weather had made the day useless for anything more than catching up on all those boring little chores one puts off for just such days, and drinking a lot of reheated coffee to cut the constant chill that sneaks in through the cracks in the windows. When I heard scratching at my door, I thought it was probably a stray cat looking for a warm radiator and a saucer of milk. That alone, I reasoned, would provide some relief from the monotony of the day's non-events. You can well imagine my delight when I opened the door, door and saw Harold standing on the other side of the portal, his hair drenched and hanging from him like an unwrung mop. From his teeth dangled a plastic bag. I asked him in and examined the contents of the bag that he dropped at my feet. When I found what I found was the manuscript of Harold's new book, together with this note. My dear colleague, I had not planned to write again. Indeed, after my friend Chester read my first book, he accused me of writing without a literary license. I had settled into my comfortable life as a nice American middle-class dog with my nice American middle-class family when strange events once again engulfed me. Naturally, after all the fur had flown and the dust had settled, I felt compelled to write the story down. What resulted in the manuscript you now see before you? I do hope you will enjoy it and, as before, find it worthy of your readers attentions. Your humble servant, Harold X. I convinced Harold to stay long enough for a donut and a bowl of hot chocolate. Then, as suddenly as he'd appeared, he was gone, leaving behind him the pages of his story, which he has chosen to call Holiday Inn. Chapter 1. The Departure. Looking back on it now, I doubt that there was any way I could have imagined what lay ahead. After all, I'm not as well read as Chester, and except for the time I'd run away from home as a puppy and spent a fitful night under a neighbor's porch, I really had had very little experience of my own in the outside world. How could I have begun to imagine then what would befall me that fateful week in August? If the memories of that week no longer make my blood run cold, they still have enough of a chilling effect to give me pause. Why, you may wonder, do I wish to stir them up now when I can hardly easily curl up in front of a nice warm radiator? and think of happier times instead. The answer, a simple one really, is just this. Whatever else may be said of that week, it was an adventure. And adventures, no matter how dark or disturbing to recall, are meant to be shared. It began innocently enough on a beautiful summer's day. The kind of day I remember thinking when the, universe, when the universe seems in perfect order and nothing can go wrong. 
A soft breeze ruffled the hairs along my neck. Birds chirped happily in the trees. A butterfly landed on my nose. And I would have stayed for a while, I think, if I hadn't sneezed him off. Such riches cannot be bought for any price, I thought, as I lay stretched out on the front lawn, chewing contentedly on one of Mr. Monroe's new running shoes. Without warning, my blissful mood was shattered by the sound of Toby's voice coming from within the house. Why? He kept repeating a bit unpleasantly. His mother answered him in that ever-patient way of hers. You've asked me several times, Toby, and I keep telling you the same thing. I know you're not happy about it, but we can't take him with us. But why? Why? Toby insisted loudly. I noticed several butterflies flutter away from our yard defensively. We've taken Harold and Chester on vacation with us before, he whined. My ears perked up. I was the topic of discussion. Just to the lake house, Toby, never on a car trip, Mrs. Monroe answered. There won't be room. Besides, you know, Harold gets car sick. You, want, you wouldn't want him to be miserable, would you? No, Toby agreed sensibly. I guess you're right. Darn right she is, I thought. But I'm going to miss them, Mom, Toby added. Mrs. Monroe's voice softened. I know you are, Toby. We'll miss them all. But we'll be gone only a week. And then you'll see them again. Think of everything you have to tell Terrell, Harold when you get home. Yeah, I guess so, Toby said, his voice trailing off in defeat. Poor kid, I thought. He's really broken up. Well, I couldn't blame him. I was a lot of fun after all. And it was natural he'd want to take me along. I mean, who would he play fetch the stick with? Whose tummy would he rub? Suddenly, panic seized me. Who was going to feed us? I dropped my Adidas, moved quickly to the front door, and began scratching on the screen. Hi, Harold, Toby said as he let me in. He looked at me sadly and put his arms around my neck. I'm sorry, boy. Mom says we can't take you on vacation this time. I'll bet you feel really disappointed, huh? Who's going to feed me? I asked with my eyes. But don't worry, we'll be back in a week. It won't be so long. Still, you feel bad you're not going, don't you? I know. Who's going to feed me? I pleaded with a hint of a whimper. Oh, and if you're wondering what's going to happen to you while we're away. Yes, yes, I asked my eyes growing wider. Don't worry. Mom and Dad have that all figured out. See, Benicula is going to stay next door at Professor Micklewhite's house. I glanced over the, at the windowsill where the rabbit's cage was kept and saw that it had hardly been removed. It had already been removed. I felt myself breaking into a cold sweat. What was going to happen to me? And you and Chester are going to be boarded. Oh, I thought, feeling relieved immediately. That's all right then. Just one little detail troubled me. I didn't have the slightest idea what being boarded meant. I decided to find Chester and ask him about it, since Chester knows or thinks he knows something about almost everything. When I found him, he was sitting in the backyard, staring off into space. Chester, being a cat, is very good at staring off into space. He once explained to me that this was his way of meditating or, as he liked to put it, 
getting mellow. At the moment I found him, he looked so mellow, I thought there was a good chance of his ripening and rotting right there before my eyes. If I didn't shake him out of it quickly, the Monroes are leaving and they're going to do something to us with boards, I told him. Don't say hello or anything, Chester replied without moving a muscle. Oh, sorry. Hello, Chester. How's it going? Chester just nodded his head slowly as if that were supposed to be telling me something. Now, what was this about boards? He asked at last. I'm not sure they're leaving and they're going to tie us to boards or something. That's all I know. I'm sure that's not all you know, Harold, he said smoothly. It may be all your brain can handle right now, but I'm sure you know at least one or two more things. Now, let's try it again. What exactly did you hear? Well, I exclaimed. Toby told me that while the family goes on vacation, you and I are going to be boarded. Boarded, Chester exclaimed, his mellowness suddenly gone with a passing breeze. We're going to be boarded? <laughs>